What's up, guys? In this video, I want to show you how to graph this function with transformations, as well as identify the domain or range. So to be able to do that, though, we first need to understand what exactly is the parent graph, as well as what is the domain and range of that parent graph, so therefore we can identify what the graph looks like and the transformations. So let's go ahead and first do that. All right, one thing I tell my students, you know, especially once we're getting into Algebra 2, and definitely my pre-calculus and my calculus students, is you have to know your parent functions, okay? I mean, it's just so critically important to be able to do that. So therefore, you can do a lot of the math, you know, rather easily. Like, if you have a foundational basis understanding of what this graph looks like, then applying this transformation and identifying the domain range is going to be rather simple, right? And it takes practice. I understand that. Um, and a lot of times, especially when you're first learning this, you know, it, it can be confusing and, you know, it just takes a little time. But keep on working on it and you can do it. So the main important thing, you know, at least in this one, is here's our parent function. We recognize that it's always positive, right? It's always in that first quadrant. Transformations can change that. So that's why we need to know that. But let's go and identify what the domain range is. So remember, the domain is going to be the set of all x values, right? So a lot of times what I like to do is sometimes like picture like a little figure here. Okay, and say left to right. Like, how far can this person basically go? Well, they can say so they can go all the way over to left. They can step on left, right? So we can say the domain is going to be from zero. And then how far can they go? Well, that arrow says they can keep on going all the way over, right? Keep on going, like, never stop. So we could say, well, to never stop, we could basically say they can keep on going to the right, which is going to be towards infinity. So the domain here is going to be from zero to infinity. Now, the range is going to be the set of all y values. Right? So that's basically now what we're saying is, well, how up and down are they going to go? Right? We know they can go how far left and right. The range is going to be so how far up and down. So you could say if they start at the beginning, they're again at zero. right? And then as long as they keep on going to the right, right, they're going to keep up increasing. Now, obviously, they're not increasing as fast as they used to, right? but they're going to keep on going up and up and up. right? There's no way, there's no like asymptote or anything else that we see that are going there. So the range in this case is going to be from zero to infinity. Okay. Now, a square root function does not have any asymptotes. There's no asymptote that the graph is going to be approaching. But sometimes the way that it tapers off, it looks like that. And sometimes that can be confusing for students. But there is no asymptote here. So notice, remember, we'd use like the dashed line to represent that. Okay. So now what we need to understand is the transformations. All right. Because the transformations are going to help us understand not only how to shift this graph, but also how the domain and range are now going to change. So the main thing I want you to understand is on this graph, we have the coordinate point 0, comma 0. And what we want to do is be able to understand what is this doing to that graph and what is this going to be doing to that graph. Um, and therefore, what we're going to do is I'm simply just going to move this coordinate point that I have, 0, 0. You could do 1, 1. I always like to use 0, 0. And we're just going to do it that transformation. All right. So the main important idea that I want you to understand is this is inside the function, right? That's under the radical. And this is outside. So when you have functions that are inside, that's shifting the graph left or right. When you have operations that are inside the radical or under it, right, or inside the function or under the radical in this case, that's going to be applying operations that are left or right. And in this case, when you're subtracting, what that's going to be doing is a shift. And you're actually going to be shifting the graph three units to the right. When you have a function outside, that's going to be what we call our vertical transformation. So anything that's outside of the radical is going to be vertical. Again, if you're adding or subtracting, that's going to be a shifting up or down. If I'm adding four, that means I'm going to be shifting the graph up four. Okay, now, so all I'm simply going to do is do a nice little x, y, and I'm say, all right, I have 0, 0. I'm going to shift it over three units, 1, 2, 3, and then I'm going to go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And that is now going to be my new dot. Now what I can simply do is replace this graph and just go like this. Now, one thing that students a lot of times they get with me all the time is they, but Mr. McLogan, shouldn't it be like three units to left? Isn't negative left? I get it. And I have videos explaining this like detailed. To give you like a quick little way just to verify, let's pretend you're on a test. Let's pretend you're on a quiz or your homework and you're like, crap, I'm confused. I don't know which one is which. Plug in a value, right? You have an XY table, guys. Plug in a value. What would be a good value to pick? Probably the one that's going to make the radicand zero or one, right? So I'm going to pick three. What about when x equals three? Let's see what that value is. Plug three in, okay? When I plug three in, that's gonna be three minus three is zero. Square root of zero is zero, plus four is four. So when I plug in three, x is three, my y value is three comma four. Right, when I plug in three, I get four. That's the point. Notice how it's shifted three units to the right, not shifted three units to the left. If it was shifted three units to the left, then I'd have it at negative three comma four. Well, what happens when you plug in a negative three? That gives you a negative nine. See how that's not even on the graph? You can't take the square root of a negative number in your real number system, right? That's going to be imaginary. So that is just a quick way that you can verify if you're doing your transformations correctly, right? Test it. Plug in a point. Now let's go and finish off with the domain range. So the domain remembers the set of all x values. Well, originally it was 0 to infinity. Now I shifted the graph over 3 units. So now my domain is from 3 to infinity. 
Okay, right, my little guy can still go to the right, just can't go past three to the left. And let's do the range, right? That's gonna be up or down. So it was zero comma infinity. Now I shifted it up four. So now it's gonna be to four comma infinity. So this graph is fairly easy, but what about if you have a stretch and a compression? How would you do that? Well, that's gonna come up in the next video.